Dat is gek. Dat hebben we aan maar. We're here at the Baby and Child Research Center. We're interested in how babies learn to talk, how they um, develop their social and cognitive skills, and also we're interested in essentially from pregnancy up to when children go to school. In the neuroimaging lab, we are able to monitor the brain activity of infants. In this case, we are monitoring if the motor uh, cortex of infants is active when they expect an action. And this will give us information about uh, the role of the motor cortex in building action prediction abilities. I will tell you a bit more about the SMILEY study as an example of the, the research that we do. We follow a group of 150 mothers and their babies and we investigate uh, the association between the well-being of the mother and the development of the baby. And in particular we are interested in the development of the gut bacteria. Still very little is known how the gut bacteria composition early in life develops. And with the SMILEY study we hope to get more insight in this. We collect various types of data. We have biological samples, we have psychological data and behavioral data. Saliva samples are collected to analyze the level of hormones present in the body uh, or for example immune factors. We only need a small amount of hair to analyze the level of hormones. And it's a bit different from the saliva sample. In saliva we look at hormones present in the body on that moment, while in hair we can look at the level of hormones that have been present in the past months. So now we know what happens within the body, but we also want to know what someone thinks and how someone feels. So that's why we ask our participants. We use different types of questionnaires. So now we know what happens within the body, we know how someone thinks and feels, and the missing link is how someone behaves. So that's why we observe our participants in everyday situations. For example, we ask them in the lab uh, to do things like a diaper change or play with their children. So some of the um, findings that we had recently is that babies can actually recognize in the way that we as adults move how we feel. Also babies um, tend to pay attention until they can maximize their learning. So they, for example, look at something like an image um, until they think that they can't learn anything from it anymore and then they look away. So this is really interesting because it tells us something about their curiosity and how they explore their environment. In the eye tracking lab, we can measure children's um, gaze. So for example, we can see where they're looking at on the screen and that tells us something about their expectations. For instance, where's how people use cups, for example, that cups go to the mouth rather than on the ear. Or we can also use it for them to see how they explore the space, for example, a picture. So we're really interested in uh, children's behavior. So for example, how they learn action and effect. Um, so we're recording their behavior as we play playful games, for example, together at the table, um, as you can see here. In the motion tracking lab, we can use infrared cameras to measure 3D movement in space. And we can do that um, from infants to young children, but also from parents, for example. And we can use that to tell us something about their motor development, how they're planning movements, but also how children, for example, learn movements from other people.
the um, Baby and Child Research Center is actually not only an academic research center, but also um, a center for expertise in the field of early social development and general development. And so um, I think we can benefit with our findings in terms of clinical, but also educational settings. But also if we know how they learn, for example, from the environment and what they pay attention to, we can use that in educational settings to stimulate the environment and children um, in a way that is optimal. Thank you.